Good morning, church. Here we are, halfway through the week once again. I want to title this morning's talk, Surviving the Wilderness. The Bible says a lot about wilderness experiences. Actually, everybody at some point will go through one, or two, or three, or more. Uh, the people of God came out of Egypt and went through the wilderness before they got to the promised land. Jesus himself, before his public ministry began, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, there's a parable that Jesus told. He told many parables throughout his ministry, but it's found in Luke 15, and it's the parable of the lost son. Now, the lost son, uh, read the story for yourself, but just some highlights. The lost son says to his father, I wish he was dead so I could have my inheritance now. I want to go off and be me with no restrictions. So off he goes. The father gives him his share of his wealth. Off the son goes and squanders all the money in wild living. But he ends up in a wilderness. And the wilderness came upon him. See, once he'd spent all his money, a social national calamity happened. The whole province that he was in went into severe famine, severe famine. This young man finds himself doing something so degrading to his own culture. He was Jewish. Jesus was telling this parable to the Jews. Everything that this man done was an offence. And now he finds himself feeding pigs, which were unclean, actually desiring the food that the pigs had. But what Jesus pulled out of this, he said, then the man came to his senses. He woke up. The first thing he realised was, I don't like myself. I wanted to find out who I was. And now that I have, I don't like me. I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against my father. These are the things the man begins to think. And then it says he went on a journey. He started to journey back to his father. And he thought, I could go back and be a hired hand. I could go back and just help. Perhaps my father will let me come back as a servant. Now, when he was still a long way off, the father saw him and ran out to greet him. Put his arms and cloak around him, put a signet ring on him. You see, what the whole thing was about, the famine, all God orchestrated. Why? To bring the son out of the sinner. You see, the son left the father as a sinner. He didn't know who he was. He didn't understand his identity. And when calamity happened, when he had nowhere to hide, where he was exposed to himself and saw himself as he truly was, he didn't like it. But he still didn't see himself as a son. He was still in identity crisis. And as he comes back and the father sees him and runs to him and embraces him, the son is still trying to say, perhaps, father, if, if I do this or if I do that. And the father's saying, no, this is who you are. You don't realise who you are. He puts his cloak on his son. He takes off his signet ring and places it on his finger. And he says, you see, you're my son. You're my child. You can come to me no other way. I'm not having you as servant. I'm not having you as anything else but this. You are my child. He gives the son his own identity with his cloak, saying, yes, you're mine. I love you. He gives him his signet ring, which is a place of authority. You're mine. You're mine. And the son, although he comes back broken, he actually comes to life. You see, the father said, because the other son was out ploughing the field and doing the stuff. Actually, the other son had his theology correct. The other son did everything right. There he was ploughing the field and he missed it all. He comes in and moans. What are you doing, Dad? I've done everything you've asked me to do. I've been out there working hard. My theology is right. I've got it all together. This one, this son of yours, he squandered his living on prostitutes and this and that. You've given him your ring. 
you're having a feast, you've slaughtered the ox, what's going on? And the father says, you're missing it, you're missing it. See, this is a gospel about life. And the younger son, the one who squandered it all, the one who found his identity outside the father was not good. But his identity in the father was as a son and he found life and he came alive. You see, the father said, this son of mine was dead. And I don't believe that's just when he left. He'd always been dead. But now he's alive. Now he's alive. You see, what is the wilderness all about? Why does God allow calamities? Because nothing happens without God saying it can happen. It's to bring the sons, the daughters, the children out of us. And it's often through hardship. It's often through disaster. It's often through pain. All that are wilderness places where we've got nothing to reflect on, nothing to base our identity on, except him is where we're brought forth. God is committed to making you you, the you that he sees, the you that he knows, the you that's his child, and he will bring you out. But it's often a painful process because the one that we're familiar with the one that's familiar with the things of this earth is the one that dies so that we may come forth. And it can be, and it's often a painful process, but it's so that we can know love, life, freedom, and be who we are. You see, we are children of eternity. Our values are different. He brings us out of this world, often by taking this world out of us. And it's all because of his great love for us. It's all because in our true identity. It's all because he says, you'll only have me as father. I'll only have you as my child. For you are not servants. He doesn't want religion. He wants relationship. Amen. Over the next few weeks, I'll be looking at this theme on Wednesday. And seeing how wonderful the wilderness can be that God's commitment over us is for us to make us who he sees and transform us to the likeness of his son, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed, people of God, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye for now.